Hello everyone, welcome to another video. I've been meaning to make this for some time, but I've been a bit busy with other matters of life. So I decided to record it today when I have the time. The subject of today's video is about metaphysics and why is it important to be study metaphysics and familiarize ourselves with it and get to know different metaphysicians and so forth and why an education in metaphysics is important. Some time ago, I made a video introducing several important metaphysical books and someone said in the comments that why isn't there any book or writing by Descartes, Hegel, Spinoza, modern Western philosophers, basically. In reply to that, I should once again assert that whenever we use the word metaphysics in this channel, we do not mean modern Western metaphysics that is taught in universities as a branch of philosophy that is completely different from the metaphysics that we're trying to expound. Rather, this metaphysics is far removed from that, and it's basically integral and traditional metaphysics that we're talking about. So, and this metaphysic is basically not taught in any university, no matter how prestigious the university be, whether it be Princeton, Harvard, there is no subject, there is no course on traditional metaphysics offered by any prestigious university, whatever. So this metaphysics is basically radically different from that. And I think this is important to first clear. And the following is, I think, a good definition of traditional metaphysics that we're talking about. It is the science of the supreme real, the absolute and of the na true nature of things. It is a doctrine about possibility, possibilities of being and not being, of finite and infinite. Also, traditional metaphysics contains a doctrine or a method which allows us to, by following it, to grasp the absolute and attain the truth by means of a method. It is not basically mere speculation and theory like modern Western metaphysic, which is basically epistemology. Anyhow, traditional metaphysics, I would say that it is very similar to mathematics because it is an invariable science. Mathematics is universal and its principles are true no matter where and whenever we live, we happen to live. 2 plus 2 is 4. Today it is 4 and 1000 years from now it is still 4. Same thing holds true for metaphysics because its truths or doctrines are valid and do not belong to any particular era. Its doctrines are true so it is very similar to mathematics. To quote the words of Saint Hussein Nast, he says, it is a science as strict and exact as mathematics and with the same clarity and certitude, but one which can only be attained through intellectual intuition and not simply through radiocination. It thus differs from philosophy as it is usually understood. Rather, it is a theoria of reality whose realization means sanctity and spiritual perfection and therefore can only be achieved within the cater of a revealed tradition. This supreme science of the real, it is is the only science that can distinguish between the absolute and the relative, appearance and reality. Moreover, this science exists as the esoteric dimension within every orthodox and integral tradition and is united with the spiritual method derived totally from the tradition in question. It is also important to note that traditional metaphysics, at least the way that we use it, is pretty much synonymous with philosophia perennis or perennial philosophy that is basically the school of thought that was emerged in the 20th century but its reality always existed and in fact the first person who ever used the term um, perennial philosophy was Leibniz who was a famous philosopher mathematician a very important and influential influential figure he used the word perennial philosophy in one of his letters when he was asked what school of philosophy do you follow he said perennial philosophy but this was of course 
popularized and expanded by figures such as Shuan, Kumaraswamy, and Genon. It really reached its apex by the writings of these great men. Now, it is also important to note that this science is not, as we said, taught in any, un any university. And in the past, this was not contained in books. It was basically a sort of science that was transmitted orally. It was, however, written as well, but very few people had access to such body of knowledge. And fortunately, we modern people, we have the access to these writings, and we are so fortunate and lucky that our ancestors and predecessors have left us with these invaluable works that we can benefit from, read, and uh, be able to annotate, digest, and really absorb them. Anyhow, now the question arises that where can we find these books? Where is it possible to read them? I would say that the best source to begin with, if you're in the beginning of the road, is to start with the writings of the traditionalists, that is, the three main figures of the perennialist school of thought of the 20th century, by such people as Ananda Kumaraswamy, this is of course his books of letters, reading Ananda Kumaraswamy and reading the works of Shuan, Friedrich Shuan, who is basically the greatest of the three, I would say, and also reading the works of René Guénon. These three people, the main figures of the perennialist school of thought, their writings are very, very invaluable, very, very important, remarkable. I can hardly overemphasize the importance of the writings of these great men. They're so rich and so deep and so beautiful and so precise that it is hard to find anything similar to them in any other work. It's really impossible or at least very rare. And by reading the writings of these men, you will give yourself a genuine education. You will learn things that there you can never learn in a thousand years but with a bachelor's or by university education. And I would say that the ideal curriculum is to spend two years at least to familiarize yourself with the writings of these three main figures and the, ref and the references and the books that they refer to. So spending two years reading the, these writings and meditating on them, contemplating on them, will get you very, very, very ahead of any other person of your peers, at least in the spiritual and metaphysical domain. And I myself have been familiar with the writings of the traditionalists for I think at least two or three years now. And one thing that I noticed that these people have in common is their ability to be so precise. And if you're interested or looking forward to improve your writing, your academic writing, your writing in general, the writings of these men can help a lot. They expand the vocabulary in metaphysics. They give you these very, very elegant expressions that are very inspiring. And it's really the benefits contained in reading these works are numerous. And you will find it out yourself when you read them. Kumaraswamy himself, who is basically my personal favorite amongst the three, is a remarkable figure. I've made a couple videos about him. And I would say that spending one year just reading Kumaraswamy himself is worth your time and you will never regret doing so. And also another benefit of reading traditional metaphysics is that it gives you a solid understanding of spirituality. Because in the world that we're living today, the spiritual masters and teachers and the so-called gurus are very much far from solid, They're far from being genuine spiritual teachers. I'm not saying that they don't say anything important or beautiful or useful. They, of course, say many important things. But if you look at their teachings as a whole, you realize that they don't have this intellectual rigor and doctrine to them. That is, they don't provide you with a specific method that is solid, that is 
orthodox or traditional and something that you can rely on their their teachings are very shallow compared to traditional metaphysics and by in re-education in traditional metaphysics you're able to you're able to make yourself immune to those kind of things and in fact i read this remarkable passage regarding this in evola's book revolt against the modern world which I have purchased recently. In the introduction, I read this very interesting saying, which was which I want to read it to you now, because it's related to what I just said. Uh, this is written in a short introduction to G Julius Evola. Uh, it is said that the traditionalist discipline of metaphysics cuts like a razor through the sloppy thinking and sentimentality prevalent among New Age types. It sets standards of integrity against which other spiritual teachings either stand or fall. It assumes, find, it assumes from the outset that the absolute truth has always been there for the finding, so it has no time for the fumblings of Western philosophy, so-called, nor for a science whose basic dogma is that man is still searching for the truth. And it incidentally forces a revelation of all the modern ideals that most North Americans take for granted, such as individualism, equality, evolution, and progress. One looks at the world with new eyes once one has passed through a traditionalist re-education. That is a remarkable passage on the goal of traditional metaphysics. And in fact, it's completely true. By reading the traditional metaphysics, you're able to acquire a new vision, a new perspective of the world. It really changes your vision and understanding of things. It's a remarkable thing that you can do for yourself. And I think that metaphysics, traditional metaphysics, another important factor of it is, or another benefit of it, is that it gives you a power of discrimination. Because metaphysics is about the science of the real and the illusory. What is real and what is illusory? What is real? What is appearance? What is essence? What is form? So it's really, it gives you this power of discrimination that allows you to discriminate the false, the illusory from the real in everyday life. So, for example, you meet someone and... Um, you're on a date or whatever and you're able to with that vision you're able to realize in the beginning that whether or not that person is the right match for you whether or not they are going to um, make you a better person or you're going to be able to make them a better person or whatever you in the beginning you're able to realize all of that or other things as well. You're able to discriminate, so to speak. And there are many, many benefits. It sharpens your mind and gives you concentration. It really purges the negativity from the mind. And I think traditional philosophy and metaphysics really heals the sick soul. It really heals the soul that is sick. And I think that in the modern world, our souls are so distracted and chaotic and so bombarded with images and tendencies and all these all this materialism and seeking for pleasure all of this has really torn the soul into pieces and we're suffering from this and i think the traditional metaphysics is able to purge all of that away it's able to heal the soul and restore light to it and unify it the scattered pieces of the soul of course if i could use such an expression such are the metaphysics such are the benefits of reading metaphysics and i would highly recommend you to read the writings of the traditionalist to familiarize yourself with metaphysics because this science is not taught anywhere in the world and even if you don't attend a university even if you don't have a degree or whatever, by reading these works, you haven't lost anything. I think you have gained far more than the university professors who teach in the best universities. Now, thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a 